With their coveralls and safety shields, these students could be mistaken for extras in a post-World War II industrial film rather than digital age teenagers. The sights, sounds, and smells coming from this high school medals class in Sherwood, Oregon, look and feel like a 20th century factory. In some ways, this scene is a relic, because in Oregon, this medals class and other career education courses offered at this school have become rare. Terrell Smith has been teaching career training classes for 37 years. Those kind of courses are not available to most high schools in Oregon. Many students don't have the opportunities to um, experience kind of this career focus, get, get them on that career training train, if you will. Smith says this lack of career training not only puts students at a disadvantage, but helps contribute to the skills gap between workers and employers in the Oregon economy. We're sitting in a metal manufacturing lab where these, uh, these kids that learn the welding and the working with the metal and, and manufacturing concepts here are going to be able to walk out and get uh, family wage jobs right out of high school. And, and we have a, a woods program where they're, they're learning the, the building trades. So we're, we're doing it here, but I don't, we don't see it in the high school in general. So I think that gap's going to get worse. Smith's concern comes at a time when Oregon needs more workers in manufacturing, and also growing industries like healthcare and professional business services. Overall, the state's job growth rate is 3% a year, 1% above the national average. Oregon is also creating twice as many jobs needed to keep up with its population growth. Andrew McGough runs Work Systems, a nonprofit organization trying to improve the quality of the Portland area workforce. We have no problem on the upper end. Um, city of Portland itself is above 50% of our residents have a bachelor's degree or above. High school and the middle skills are really where we're predominantly challenged. By middle skills, Mago means Oregon's blue-collar industries, like advanced manufacturing, production, and metal fabrication. We have tens of thousands of jobs in very traditional manufacturing areas. The challenge is, is that uh, new workers uh, don't appear to be all that interested in those kinds of jobs. We're projecting about 30,000 growth and replacement jobs over the course of the next 10 years. And there is no way that, that we're going to fill that through our traditional means. That's just metal? That's just metals, yeah. But the real dearth uh, for employers is on the production side. They just can't find people who are suited for the kinds of production work that we have available today and that we see in the near future. Last summer, two-thirds of Oregon employers reported to the Oregon Employment Department difficulty filling job vacancies, saying they weren't receiving enough applicants or too many applicants lacked the necessary skills. This mismatch is nationwide. The National Skills Coalition, a Washington, D.C. group that advocates for worker training, says while 15% of U.S. jobs are low-skilled and 31% are high-skilled, 54% are middle-skilled. But only 44% of the country's workers are trained in those middle skills a 10% gap. Oregon's skills gap is better than the national average, only 4%. But some states have a much greater gap. For example, Alabama, 13%. And New Jersey, 15%. Oregon has sometimes gotten creative in its response. With a nearly $500,000 grant, Sherwood High School teacher John Niebergall drives around the state in a motorhome, delivering scanners, laser cutters, and 3D printers. Niebergall works with teachers looking to develop or expand career curriculum for their schools. Industry is realizing those baby boomers are retiring and we have to fill the pipeline. I want 23, 24 year olds that can buy a house because they have a living wage career. And I think this field of advanced manufacturing has those opportunities. Niebergall's grant came from a state fund established for career and technical education revitalization. Known as the CTE grant, the fund was established in 2011 and has so far distributed about $22 million. But according to an analysis by the Oregonian newspaper, statewide, about 61% of grant applications were not funded, and more than half of all Oregon middle and high school students had no access to programs last year. Oregon Governor Kate Brown wants to change that. I'm out traveling and meeting with Oregon business people. Uh, The first question that I ask them is, what is the biggest challenge that you face? And inevitably, they tell me that the biggest challenge is having a talented, diverse work pool um, to hire from. 
In July, Governor Brown signed a bill authorizing $35 million in spending for career and technical education, nearly doubling the state's investment. When we spent our day with Sherwood High School, one of the teachers said to us that he actually views this, this need and this push as a social justice issue. Do you agree? Oh, totally. Absolutely. Um, it provides career options for students who don't necessarily have them right now. We want our students to graduate from high school, but we want them to graduate with a plan, whether it's college or career. And career and technical ed opens all num numerous possibilities for our students. While Governor Brown says she plans to press the state legislature for permanent CTE funding, the Pacific Northwest Carpenters Union is preparing for baby boomer retirement. Estimating that 40% of its carpenters will retire in the next decade, the union has been recruiting young people to shore up its ranks. Jennifer Yost has been a carpenter apprentice for three years. When she finishes her apprenticeship next year, she will be a pile driver working in marine construction. Full scale for uh, pile drivers in our area is $35.77 an hour. Plus you get vacation pay, you uh, have health insurance, which is something for me was huge, and you have a pension. Once you're vested after five years, you, you draw onto a pension. Yas followed a circuitous route to the profession, taking a handful of college courses after high school, then working in customer service before her uncle encouraged her to think about pursuing a trade. I came into the apprenticeship when I was 33, and I wish I would have known about it right out of school, you know, just so I could have taken advantage of it then and had all these years be invested. As one of 842 area apprentices, Yost says, unlike many of her friends, the union apprenticeship program provided a path to a debt-free education. This is the first time that I feel like I've been able to work a job where I can help others instead of having to ask for help, like I'm self-sustaining. This 60-acre facility along the Willamette River is where one of Oregon's longtime employers, Vigor Industrial, has over a thousand skilled workers. From pipe fitters to welders, Vigor builds ships and repairs some of the largest vessels in the world. Frank Foti is the CEO. The industrial worker of today that sort of looks nearly extinct in the U.S. may be one of the most prized assets we have in a very short period of time. Vigor says the average age of the Portland workforce is 42, and the company says it's perpetually recruiting, offering after-school programs for high school students and partnerships with community colleges. Recent high school graduate Zach Clayville works on Vigor's Portland yard as a tool room attendant. I didn't know what I wanted to do or... Well, I just didn't want to sit around like in an office job. Zach learned about Vigor through an after-school program called Pathways to Manufacturing. Everyone's thoughts, and at least in high schools, I'm going to go out there, I'm going to work my ass off, and I'm going to make nothing doing it. I might as well go flip a burger instead of swing a hammer. Much easier for the same price, but not many people realize that there are really well-paying jobs down here. Fody says it is this very narrative that will ultimately need to change if the state and the businesses working in the state hope to entice the next generation of workers to the trades. I mean, these are huge earning jobs. This is people that you are seeing here with their hard hats and safety vests on are in the fifty dollars to $100,000 a year rank. The jobs are interesting, they're safe, and you walk away saying, I made this. And there are so few things that we get to say that about uh, in our country today.